there. My name is Corinne O'Flynn, and you're listening to the Calm Entrepreneur Podcast. I am a USA Today bestselling author, nonprofit executive, and organizing nerd with over 20 years experience running my own small businesses. I teach entrepreneurs, solopreneurs, and small business owners like you how to organize your business, find more time, and deepen your alignment practice to experience more calm and confidence every single day. If you're looking for that intersection between practical business advice and spiritual goodness, then you're in the right place. So sit back, relax, and let's dive into this week's episode of the Calm Entrepreneur Podcast. Welcome, welcome to the Calm Entrepreneur Podcast. I'm your host, Corinne O'Flynn, and this is episode 16. So hello from Colorado, where spring has finally arrived. And today was the perfect example of why it's the season of new beginnings. Like it was a storybook day. The sun shone gloriously, casting a warm glow on everything it touched. The breeze carried the scent of new growth and like it smelled like soil outside today. Birds were chirping. Everything about today was beautiful and the sun was so warm. It was probably in the 70s. I don't even know how how warm it was today. But it was a day that begged to be enjoyed. And it was one that made me want to clean out all of the old things in my house. Even the stale air that had been lingering inside seemed to call for renewal. And as I opened my windows to let in the fresh air, I felt a sense of rejuvenation and hope. And it's a reminder to me that with every new season comes the opportunity for growth and transformation, both within ourselves and in the world around us. So today, I invite you to join me in embracing the spirit of spring and thinking about spring cleaning, which is, you know, cleaning out the old to make room for the new. And I want to start uh, this conversation today with a question. Where in your life are you dealing with clutter? And I'm not just talking about physical clutter. I'm talking about mental clutter too. What unfinished tasks or responsibilities are weighing you down in your mind that you need to complete in order to create space for the new things to come in? Where in your physical space, your home, your car, your workspace, where are you feeling overwhelmed and stuck and boxed in by clutter? I think we all know how easy it is to get caught up in by physical clutter, right? It's a thing. We all, I think we all deal with it. But it's also easy to accumulate tasks and responsibilities and commitments and agreements that no longer serve us or align with our current priorities. And these unfinished tasks, they can weigh us down, both physically and mentally, and they can prevent us from making room for new things that could bring us joy and growth and fulfillment in our lives. To create space for new things in your life, it's important to take a close look at what you're currently holding on to. And this may include unfinished projects, unfulfilling relationships, as well as cluttered physical spaces, right? But this is also mental patterns and limiting beliefs that are no longer serving us. And once we've identified the areas in our life that need completion or need cleaning, the next thing to do is to take action. So this could mean finishing that half-completed project that's been sitting on your to-do list for months. It can be having a difficult conversation with someone, a friend or a family member. It can be decluttering a physical space to create a sense of calm and order. All of these things work to shift the energy and open up space for the new things that we are calling in. Because make no mistake, at all times, we are attracting all kinds of things into our lives, but there are times when we don't have space for them and then they don't come, right? Of course, completing all these tasks and taking care of these responsibilities can be challenging, right? I'm not pretending that we're going to snap our fingers and, and have everything done. And this is especially difficult if these things have been lingering for a long time right? And for for mental things, a lot of those things are festering, right? But by taking action and finishing what needs doing, you create space for new things to come into your life. This is new opportunities, new relationships, and even new personal growth and development, 
right? This is the ultimate springtime flex, right? It's all about releasing the old to make way for the new. It's about creating a sense of clarity and purpose and focus in our life that we can use to move forward with confidence and with joy, right? Because when you take time to reflect on the things that need decluttering, right? On the things that need completion, you're taking action to create space for something new. And I want to expand on the idea of mental clutter and specifically talk about the stories. And I mean stories that we tell ourselves that keep us stuck and avoiding reality, right? And all of us do it, right? None of, none of us are immune. It's common for us to fall into the trap of rationalizing and settling for less than we truly want or deserve. And maybe it's because we feel failure or rejection or because we've been conditioned to believe that we should be content with what we have. But the truth is, settling for less is something that we can feel in our bodies. Like we know when we're doing it. And when we do it, it prevents us from fulfilling our, our true path and living a life that truly aligns with our values and our aspirations. To break free from this cycle of settling, it's important to open ourselves up to receive all the goodness that we do truly deserve. And this could involve confronting our fears, right? Addressing and facing limiting beliefs and taking steps to overcome those things. Right. And this may also be about setting clear intentions and goals that align with this true path that we want and then taking action to bring those things into reality. And I think that, you know, that feels like a contradiction because if we set clear intentions and create goals that align with our true path and take action, well, then we don't really need to declutter, do we? And the opposite is true because what happens is, Unless you declutter, you won't have the space or even the mental space to even see that the things that you want are no longer in alignment. So the, the clearing out has to come first, right? And this is a hard one for a lot of people, you know, and myself included, because at the heart of opening ourselves up to receive all the goodness that we deserve is the belief that we are truly worthy of it. We are worthy of it. And I repeat that because this is something that when I sat down to really think about, it hit me in the gut. It was like, oof, like it really does come down to self-worth, right? When we value ourselves, we put ourselves first. That's when the world changes, right? That's when our lives change. And that's when we take back our power and it all, it all lives in, in self-worth right? Each and every one of us is worthy of living a life that brings us joy and fulfillment. We are worthy of pursuing our passions and our dreams with purpose and determination. And when we believe, truly believe in our own worthiness, we start to recognize the places where we're telling ourselves a story. And we all do it. Like we have places in our lives where we are rationalizing where we are settling. And the magical thing about this is that once we do that, once you see it, you can't unsee it. And that's a good thing, right? It might be unpleasant. It might be like, a, oh, I can't believe I was doing that. But once, once, we, once we see it, it's only a matter of time before we start to shift with intention, right? We, be, we create the space for abundance and prosperity to flow in our lives. And that is actually a byproduct of seeing it. Like once you see it, that's it. Like there's no way to look at something with raw truth and then deny it again, right? Because we're moving toward abundance. We're moving toward prosperity. We're in a growth path. And the, the only way forward is through. And the way through when it comes to the things that we're telling ourselves stories about is by shedding light on those things. You know, bring it into the light, call it what it is, own it, and then it loses all of its power, right? Because we no longer are available for it. So if you find yourself rationalizing or settling for less than what you truly want, take a moment to reflect on your beliefs and intentions there. Ask yourself what it is that you truly desire 
and what steps you can take to bring it into your life. And a lot of times that step goes back to the decluttering. Like that's the spring cleaning. It's that's the clearing out of the mental and the physical clutter in our lives that are holding us back from, from those moving forward steps. So remember that you deserve to live a life that aligns with your true path, right? And that the universe is abundant and ready to support you in achieving your dreams. And by opening yourself up to receiving all the goodness that you deserve, you can break free from the cycle of settling because that's what it is. It's a cycle. It's a, it's a conditioning. It's a process that we, it's a habit that we've grown into in our lives. It's something that has been, you know, it's, it's part of just socializing in the world. Like we, it's being human, right? And so I guess that's a good point to, to make here. If you find that you are rationalizing and settling, don't berate yourself. Don't beat yourself up. You should reward yourself and be like, oh my goodness, look, I spotted it. I found it. Go on an investigative journey. Become a detective of your own life and rejoice every single time you discover a new area in your life where you're like, whoa, that's a story. The power that comes with this is, is immeasurable. I can't even articulate that more strongly. It's a journey and it's, it's a constant journey. Like it's something that you continue to do because we continue to unfold and we continue to level up. And as we level up, you know, I, I've heard it said, um, new level, same devil, the same stuff comes back, but it's in a different frame, right? It's, it's a never ending process, but once you break free from the cycle of settling and you move toward a life of your own purpose and fulfillment, like there's no stopping you. So that is why it is so important to do a mental, emotional, and full body spring cleaning because all this is just junk and it's taking up space. So clearing out the old stuff is an essential part of opening ourselves up to receive all the goodness, right? It's not just about letting go. It's about letting go with the, with, with the purpose of openness and expansiveness to receive. Because when we hold on to old beliefs, behaviors, and physical stuff that no longer serves us, we're actually limiting our potential for growth and transformation, right? We may feel stuck or stagnant, unable to move forward or embrace new opportunities, but by letting go of what no longer serves us, we create space for new potentials to emerge, right? And again, this is physical space, emotional space, old patterns, limiting beliefs, toxic relationships, you know, toxic situations. When we clear out the old, we make room for the new, new experiences, new ideas, new people, new opportunities. All of these things can flow in, but only if there's room right? And of course, clearing out the old is not always easy, right? Sometimes it can be. Sometimes it can really be about recognizing something and saying, nope, no more. But, you know, sometimes it's, it's more involved than that. Sometimes it's about facing a fear, right? Sometimes it's confronting uncomfortable truths, you know? Sometimes it's letting go of attachments that we've held on to for such a long time that they don't feel like they're optional, Right. But when we take the time and the effort to really do so, we truly do open ourselves up to a new, new expansive world of potential. So in many ways, clearing out like this, it's like gardening, right? It's like preparing your garden to grow. And just like a garden needs to be cleared of weeds and dead plants to make room for new growth, we need to clear out all the old junk and the gunk to make room for the new things to emerge, right? And just like a garden requires nurturing and care in order to thrive, we need to nurture and care for ourselves in order to fully embrace the new things that want to come our way. So if you're feeling stuck or stagnant, take some time to reflect on what old stuff you might be holding on to. Ask yourself, what can you let go of in order to create space for new potentials to emerge. And remember that this clearing out is not a one-time event, right? Like most of the things that I talk about, it's a practice. And, but I'm reminded of it today because it's spring and this, this, this day was like screaming about spring cleaning today. But this really 
should be a continual process of growth and transformation, right? And by embracing this as a process, you open yourself up to, you know, a continuous experience of, of moving and shifting more and more into alignment with your true path, right? Which brings you joy and fulfillment. And that brings me to an important part of this whole experience of trust, right? And that's about timing, right? Because clearing out is really just the beginning of the journey. It doesn't necessarily mean that everything that we want or that's sitting out there waiting for us, all these potentials are going to appear right away, right? Nor are they going to appear in the exact way or the exact form that we expect them to. And this is often the hardest part, right? Timing is the hardest part, and that's where trust comes in. We don't control when things come or how they look when they arrive, but we can trust that the universe has our best interest at heart, right? Gabby Bernstein says, the universe has my back. And it's really, really true. It's, it's just, it's just true. Like your belief, your belief in this is not required. Let me just say it that way. It may take time for the seeds that you've planted to grow and flourish, right? And we need to be patient and trust that we are exactly where we're supposed to be in our journey, right? Trusting in the timing of the universe is challenging, right? For all of us. And it's especially challenging when we're eager for change or we're feeling really stuck in our current situation. But by doing the work now and clearing the decks of all the things that have to go, by releasing the old junk, and making space for the new, we're preparing ourselves to receive all the blessings that the universe has in store for us, right? So just like gardening, our personal work requires effort and patience. We need to be mindful of what we're releasing and be intentional about what we want to bring in. We need to tend to our emotional and spiritual well-being and trust that the seeds that we're planting will eventually bear fruit, right? This can require a great deal of surrender because we have to relinquish control, right? And just trust that the universe will provide in its own time and in its own way. So if you're feeling frustrated or impatient with the process of receiving after doing all the work of clearing out, you need to trust me in this moment with what I'm saying that timing isn't ours right we don't get we don't get to pick the timing we need to trust that there's a plan and that the universe is is supporting us and that by creating space we are setting the stage and we are open and we're just waiting and by remaining patient and receptive you can cultivate a life that is aligned with your highest aspirations and desires and if you're saying Corinne look this is easy for you to say i don't have a moment to tie my shoes, right? Let alone do a spring cleaning of my life, you know? But I get it and I hear you and I do, I truly do understand. But as, you know, as someone who has clawed her way out of a seriously depleting and desperate burnout, please hear me when I say that you are worth it, right? It's, you need to, you need to put yourself first here. In today's world, it, everything is so fast paced, right? We get all caught up in the hustle and the bustle of everyday, like the daily life. We find ourselves overwhelmed by the sheer volume of tasks and responsibilities that need our attention, right? We can't just check out and just like say, excuse me, I need to go on a self care sabbatical. I'll be back in a week, right? Our life is happening all around us at all times, right? So it can be difficult to find the time and energy to focus on this clearing out work. But if we don't take the time to do this important work, we risk becoming stagnant and stuck and we risk burnout. So if you are feeling overwhelmed in your busyness and you are struggling to find the time to clear out and make space and take this inventory, then I urge you to get serious about getting methodical, right? This is the time where maybe you sit down and you make a list of all the things that need to be done. 
and commit to working through the list systematically. Like, and this, this working through the list systematically might be physically doing stuff, but it also might be like sitting down and journaling on stuff. It's like really taking a mental catalog of, of the things like, is this something that even needs to be here anymore? But this will allow you to prioritize your tasks and focus on the most important and urgent items first, right? By working through your list, you can start to clear out the mental and emotional clutter and the physical things that are weighing you down, right? You'll be able to see progress. You'll feel a sense of accomplishment as you take care of each thing. But most importantly, you'll start freeing up valuable mental and and emotional energy just in the act of making this list, right? And all of that open space can be redirected toward opportunities and new experiences, right? So holding on to unfinished tasks is really draining, right? It leaves us feeling depleted, unmotivated. It robs us of time and energy that we need to pursue our passions and our dreams, right? And our time is too valuable to waste on on incomplete things that are holding us back from living our best life. So take a deep breath and commit to getting methodical, especially if you're feeling overwhelmed, right? This is one of those, it's the analogy is like, if you say to someone, I don't have time to meditate for 10 minutes. I don't have time to meditate for half an hour. Well, guess what? That means you need to take an hour to meditate. So if you're feeling overwhelmed and stuck and you're, and you're too overwhelmed to find the time to do this inventory, then you really need to do it twice. So make a list of all the things that need to be done, work through them one by one, take action and, and, and know that simply by doing this simple thing, you are already making space, right? The very act of doing this is creating space. And this, this action of being methodical and making a list and doing an inventory might just be the catalyst that you need to start shifting out of old patterns and stepping into the more expansive and spacious spacious future because let me tell you like there's nothing more addicting than that feeling of release when when you realize that you actually have control over that so to truly make our unique contribution to the world which is what we're all here to do we must be in sync with right timing we must be ready for when the timing comes and this means being in tuned to the natural flow and trusting that things will happen in their own time right? And that means opening up the space so that we're ready for when the things are going to come, right? So if you're constantly pushing and striving, you might be pushing against the natural timing of things. So by, by releasing this, we're also releasing that resistance, which makes it more difficult to receive. So We have to learn to clear space and allow things to unfold in their own time, right? So patience is the key here. Patience is the key when it comes to receiving the abundance of the universe. And again, it's important to trust that we are exactly where we need to be. This process of aligning in patience isn't straightforward, right? And it comes with moments of doubt and frustration and worry because there's this this fallow space, there's this emptiness that comes with, I just released all this stuff and now I'm waiting and nothing is coming. And I'll tell you, for me, like that shows up in different ways for lots of people. Some people find it agitating. They find themselves feeling uh, antsy. For me, I get very bored and I have had to learn, and this is something that I'm still doing, of course, it's not something that I've, I've mastered. As soon as I start to feel bored, I have to resist taking on something new and I have to let myself sit in that because that is my signal that I have space and that something else is coming. And I find that when I trust in that, something actually wonderful shows up in its place, right? So try to pay attention to the places where you might be pushing up against uh, timing and trying to to force something to happen, right? So decluttering and taking action to clear out the old is a powerful signal to the universe that you're ready for more, right? It's a way of showing that you're willing to let go of what no longer serves you 
which makes room for the new things to come in and emerge, right? And by releasing old stories, excuses, limiting beliefs, right? You bring in growth, expansion, and up-leveling in your life. You are stepping up and claiming the things that are waiting for you. And that could be anything. That could be a new job. It could be a new relationship. It could be more time. It could be more margin in your day. It could be time to meditate for an hour, right? This process of decluttering is not just about physical possessions. And whenever I hear people talk about like spring cleaning and decluttering, you know, I'm all about decluttering my physical home, but I also add on to that, that whole mental piece, that emotional and mental decluttering is so huge for all of us. So I urge you to approach this process with a sense of intention and commitment, you know, journal about it, make lists of things that serve you and things that don't take a physical inventory of the stuff that serves you and the stuff that needs to go. Make a conscious decision to let go of everything that no longer serves. And if you can't just, you know, chop something off and say goodbye, maybe you start working toward easing that out of your life. And at the same time, I want you to acknowledge the things that you love and the things that are working and the energy that you want more of. I want you to ask for more of that. Because by showing the universe that you're ready, and open and that you have the space for more life in your life, you set the stage for growth, expansion, and fulfillment. So take a deep breath, let go of what no longer serves you, or take steps to start letting go, and step boldly into that next chapter that's waiting, right? Step into that next chapter with trust, that the universe is there supporting you every step of the way, because it really and truly is. And you know, I love the term synchronicity and it's, it's something that when we talk about the universe and timing, um, it's the word synchronicity comes up all the time. And as soon as you start seeing synchronicities pop in to your awareness, big or small, that's the signal that you've shifted into something that's more in alignment with what your, with, with, with what your path is meant to be. So, um, you know, keep your eyes open and just, Every time those things happen, like make note of them, write them down, share them with somebody else and really just soak up that magic because it's all around us and it's just waiting for you to just make space. So there you have it. My, uh, my, my long expansive discussion on, uh, spring cleaning. And I hope that wherever you are, you're able to find some time and make some space. So that's all I have for you this week. Thanks for listening. Remember. Part of being a calm entrepreneur is developing the systems, habits, and know-how that lets you know that you are the one in the driver's seat. You get to choose how you run your business and you get to choose how you work. So you got this. I hope you enjoyed listening to this episode of the Calm Entrepreneur Podcast. I'm Corinne O'Flynn, and if this episode was valuable to you, please head on over and rate and review wherever you consume your podcasts. Please subscribe so you'll never miss an episode. New episodes go out each week on Tuesdays, and I look forward to hanging with you again. This is Corinne signing off. Have an excellent day.